24. For the carbonate ion, which is CO3 2 minus, draw all of the resident structures and then identify which orbitals overlap to create each bond. Okay. So, carbonate ion, CO3 2 minus, we have to draw all the resident structures. And the resident structures come from your Lewis structure. So, this will kind of be like a review. We have another playlist just designated to drawing Lewis structures. So if you need a more in-depth explanation, we got you covered over there. So just go check the channel out. So in this case, when we have to draw carbonate, which is CO3 2 minus, remember the least electronegative element always goes in the middle. Oxygen on the periodic table is more electronegative. It's more to the right on the periodic table. So carbon would be in the middle surrounded by the three oxygens. So one, two, and three. Now, you just put your valence electrons around each element. Carbon has four valence electrons, so one, two, three, four. And each oxygen has six valence electrons, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, this negative two charge means that you gained two electrons. So you have to add them to your drawing. And usually if you gain electron, you the most electronegative element gains the electrons because that's what electronegativity is. The more electronegative the element, the more easy it is to take the electron for itself. So I'm going to add it to the oxygens because the oxygens are more electronegative. And I just try to be fair. Right? I'm not going to add two electrons to one oxygen. I'm going to divvy it up. So I'll put maybe one electron to this oxygen and one electron to this oxygen. And this oxygen is just chilling. Let's see what happens. So now I draw my single bonds. Dot to dot. Dot to dot. And dot to dot. And now let's just see if my outer elements have the octet. This oxygen has the octet. Two, four, six, eight. That's cool. This oxygen has the octet, two, four, six, eight. So I can't touch these single bonds. But this oxygen has seven, two, four, six, seven electrons. So dot to dot again because I want to gain the eighth electron. And now that oxygen has the octet and this carbon has the octet. So this is good. Now this is one representation of carbonate, CO3, two minus. We just have to draw all the resident structures. And the resident structures basically come from you just being fair. And that's exactly what the elements do. They want to play fair. In the drawing that I drew, I gave the double bond to this oxygen. But you have two other oxygens. You got to be fair. Everybody wants to have the chance to have the double bond. And all of the same elements want to have that chance. So just make sure of that. So if, you know, if um, we had another example where we had like an oxygen and then we had a hydrogen, just know that this would not exist, right? This carbon has five bonds, but I'm just trying to show you that you would not give the double bond to the hydrogen because it's not the same element as the oxygen. But in this case, they're all oxygens. So each one of them wants to have the chance to hold that double bond. So maybe what I'll do is I will draw another uh, drawing on this side, and I will draw another drawing on this side. Each one would have carbon in the middle, and you're still going to have the three oxygens just aligned the same exact way. So one on top, one on the bottom. And now all you're doing is you're just swapping your double bond. So maybe for the one on the left, I'll put my double bond down here. And for the one on the right, I'll put my double bond over here. Well, if that's the case, then these two oxygens have the single bonds. And in this case, these two oxygens have the single bond. And now you just have to put your lone pairs depending on who had the single and who had the double. Your single bonds had three lone pairs, right? Each one of these had three lone pairs. So I'm just going to say, okay, three lone pairs on the single bonded oxygen. So that's these two guys. And then I'll do it for the other one as well. Single bond, three lone pairs, six total 
electrons. Okay, and then for the double bond, seems like the double bond only had two to get the octet. So two for this one and two for this one. And now you have drawn all of your resonance structures. Let's just maybe make this symmetrical because that's, that's just what I do here on the channel. I always have to make it symmetrical. <laughs> and then since we have a charge, we have to bracket all of these and just give that charge in the upper right hand corner, especially if you're not going to go in and say exactly who has the negative one charge. So I will just put it in the upper right hand corner and that will, you know, I, I, I did all what I had to do. So that's the first part. We drew all the resonance structures. Now we have to identify which orbitals overlap to create each bond. Now this comes from hybridization. And since we have basically just one central element, right? We can just talk about the hybridization of that element. If you had two central elements, meaning that maybe this oxygen was then bound to another hydrogen, you would have to find out the hybridization for the two central elements. So whenever you're trying to find out those orbitals that are overlapping, you need to first find out the hybridization. And we're only going to find out the hybridization of the carbon, because if we do it for carbon, we have all the bonds checked off, right? This double bond, the single bond, and the single bond all are linked with the carbon. And that's what we're talking about with orbitals. We're only talking about the bonds. We do not care about the lone electrons. So we don't care about what's going on with oxygen. We want to know what's going on with carbon. And the hybridization rules are down here. Now there's five different types of hybridizations. And the easiest way to memorize this is just know how many letters are in each hybridization. Now the S and the P's and the D's, these are just talking about the specific orbitals that are overlapping to form your bond. But if we look at like SP2, right? I have one S and I have two P's. That's a total of three letters. If I just tackle on one more P, as in SP3, I now have four letters. So every single hybridization, if you just count the letters, that always translates to the total amount of things. So three letters, three things. Four letters, four things. And one thing is either one single bond, okay, one double bond. Even though you see a double line, it's still classified as one whole thing. A triple bond, if you see that, that's one thing, and one lone pair of electrons. But we only care about the carbon. So what's going on for each one? Well, maybe maybe we'll do it from the, the, the one in the middle. It's got one single bond, that's one thing. It's got another single bond, that's two things. And it's got a double bond, that is three things. So for the carbon, you have three things, three letters, and that is SP2 hybridized. Okay. Now, for each one of these, because you'll see that, you know, this carbon has a single, a single, that's two things, and a double, that's three things. So all the carbons are SP2 hybridized. Same thing goes for here. We have a single, a single, and a double, so that's sp2. But now we just have to be a little bit more specific. Now, when you're talking about sp2, the number of things or the number of letters equals the number of orbitals that you have. So since you have three letters, you only have three lines. One, two, three and they all equate to sp2. And when I mean lines, I'm talking about the bonds. So you're only allowed to have three bonds. And these are always going to come down to your sigma bonds. And remember, a single bond is always a sigma bond, right? A double bond is one sigma and one pi. 
So now we can say that all of these single bonds, that's sp2. So this is a sp2 orbital that's going to overlap to form the single bond because it's a because I, I'll say that it's a sigma bond. This is a sp2 um, orbital that's going to overlap to form the bond between the oxygen. And let's just do that for all the single bonds now. So anytime that I see a single bond, that's sp2. This is sp2, the orbital that's going to overlap. This is sp2, and this is sp2. But now here comes the thing. Since I have only three letters, I'm only allowed one extra sp2 hybridized, right? But here I have two lines. That's a total of four bonds, right? One, two, three, four. But I'm only allowed to say that one of them is sp2. It doesn't matter whether you put the, you know, the one on the left or the one on the right for sp2. So I'm just going to draw this, and I'm going to say that that's the sp2 one. And the same thing for the one on the left. I'm just going to say that one of them is the sp2, and the one on the right here would be the sp2 one. Now, do you see how we have hooked up, and maybe I'll just draw these in blue, all the blue bonds are part of the hybridization. You're only allowed three lines, so one, two, and three. So now the question is, well, what's going on with this other line, right? I have one that's unaccounted for. That is a random extra p orbital, and that's going to happen every single time. If you have bonds that are left over, these are now going to be your reserves, and the reserves are always coming from the p orbitals. Now, if we want it to be specific, right, we would say the valence p orbital. For carbon, since carbon's electron configuration, if I just put it over here, carbon's electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. This is the valence, right? This is the reserves. You're pulling from just a random 2p orbital to make the double bond with the oxygen. And the same thing goes for this one. You're pulling from a random 2p orbital that the carbon has. And the same thing goes for here. 2p. Just saying that it's a p orbital is probably good enough, but just be specific that it's the valence p orbital. In carbon's case, it's going to be the 2p. And now we have answered all of the questions. So identify which orbitals overlap. For all of the single bonds, it's your hybrid orbital of sp2. For your double bond, it's one of them is the hybrid, and the other one is the reserve of your 2p. And I hope that helps you out. Let me know in the comments what did you think. Um, thank you so much for viewing the video. Um, I, I, I hope you're having a good day out there. Let's keep studying hard. Keep working hard, and I will talk to you all in the next lesson. Have a great day. Bye-bye.